Well, I had a little bit of a panic there. <laughs> I thought I felt something, I thought I smelt, sorry, something hot. So I immediately turned the key off and disconnected the battery and checked anything I thought might be getting hot and I didn't feel anything getting hot. So with the battery disconnected, I'm going to check for a short circuit. Now a short circuit, of course, is caused by possibly a bare wire touching something that it shouldn't, like, uh, for example, the positive battery cable touching the negative battery cable, or something like that, which causes a shorter path in the circuit than it would normally have. So the opposite, of course, would be an open circuit where the power isn't getting to the thing like the starter solenoid. So a broken wire would cause an open circuit where two wires that were bare and crossed together would cause a short circuit. So to check for a short circuit, what I have here is a test light on my battery. I've connected the ground lead or the clip on the test light to the negative cable of the battery, which is, sorry, the negative terminal of the battery. I've disconnected the negative cable and you can see this cable has issues. It should be insulated and it's not. So that is actually very dangerous for me to continue to use because that could possibly touch the positive battery cable and cause a dead short and which would uh, be very nasty. So that cable is going to be replaced. Not right away, but anyway, so first thing we're going to do to check for a short circuit with the battery cable disconnected, the negative cable disconnected, we just touch our test light to the positive. So we, we have a circuit here. We have wire connected on our uh, test light to a negative and we touch the positive so we have a complete circuit. Now, we touch the test light to the negative battery cable and it does not light up so we do not have a complete circuit. Now, if I turn the key, the ignition key on, Okay, we still don't have a complete circuit, which means to me that there is an open circuit. Because with the key on, there should be power going through the ignition coil. Now, actually, there should only be power going through the ignition coil if the points are closed and the points are in that cover and they're definitely not closed. So what I'll do is I'll throw the, the, uh, there we go. What I did was I flipped the switch for the reverse and the light came on. Now I'm just gonna see if we can see this here. So when I turn the switch off, the light goes off. So what that's doing is the power to energize or at least to go through the reversing solenoid has to go through this test light because the test light is between the battery cable, the battery ground cable and the battery negative terminal. So with that turned off, the light is out. So there is no short circuit there. And it appears that power is going through the ignition circuit because the power has to go from the positive cable to the black box, the control box. Then it comes, has to come out of the control box on a small red wire to the ignition switch, which is then connected to the switch for the reversing solenoid, which goes back to the reversing solenoid. Now, if you follow all that, what that means is Everything between the battery and the ignition switch is good as far as being connected, or at least it's connected well enough to light this, this light when the switch is up. Now, that doesn't mean that it's connected well enough to have the current go through it to actually work the solenoid. It could be just, it could be a, a poor connection. But anyway, we know with this off, 
we don't have a short circuit. Okay, so I'm going to turn the key off, take the test light out, and hook the battery up, and then we'll try turning the key again and see what happens. Okay, so with the battery connected again, I'm going to turn the ignition switch. I'm going to turn the ignition switch on, the generator light comes on, and we'll see if this will crank over. It tried, and now we have no generator light. So we've got a weak connection here. So what I'm going to do is disconnect this uh, negative terminal on the battery. I'm going to check the terminals in this connector, which is at the edge of the driver's seat. Now there is a fuse holder in the engine compartment. Right there. I'm going to pull, pull that apart and check the contacts are clean. That takes the power from the black box, the control box, to the dash to run everything, the ignition circuit, the starting circuit, and the headlights and the horn. So I'm going to disconnect the battery because this is live all the time. So if I disconnected this with the battery connected and touched one of the ends to the cover or the engine or something we'd have a huge spark and then that's the only fuse in here so we don't want to open that and have the battery connected so i'm just going to disconnect the battery and pull some connections apart push them back together and see if i can see anything obvious here and while we're on the subject of wiring this connector here has some things in it which appear wrong, but aren't. On the side, this is the dash side, this is the engine side. So on the dash side, we have a red wire going in, connecting to a red wire coming out. Then if we turn the connector over, we have a blue wire and a blue wire. And we have a brown wire and a brown wire and a black wire and a black wire. And here we have a white wire and a gray wire. At least I think that's a white wire. <laughs> and over here, if our sorry, if our uh, neutral indicator light was connected, we have a white wire here and a yellow wire here. I'm not. And this, I believe, if I think it's faded, but I think that's actually a yellow wire going to this gray wire. But anyway, if you take this, these wires out of this connector, first of all, make sure your battery's disconnected and note which ones match up that are odd. Because if this is yellow and it's made it a gray, and this is white and made it a yellow, you could possibly put it back together thinking well the white and the gray should maybe go together but the yellow should go together which is not correct anyway I'm going to pull this uh, connector apart and look for corrosion and stuff about to fall apart but when I, if I spot anything obvious I'll come back and show it oh, and well we're still on this connector I'll explain what these wires are for actually so the red wire is positive battery power. The black wire is ignition. That puts power to the points, through the points to the coil. Actually, that put, puts power to the coil and the coil is grounded using the points. Pardon me. The brown is the reverse solenoid. The gray is the start solenoid. The white which goes to the yellow is our neutral indicator and the blue is for our generator light. Now I've pulled all the wires out of this, tugged on them and none of them have fallen apart and all the wiggling I've done here when I, I still have the key on and if I touch the battery cable my generator lights not doing anything so the problem I have isn't here 
the reason I say that is I've wiggled everything here and it hasn't changed the fact that the battery light's not on or the generator light's not on. So now I'll have a look at the fuse holder. Here is the fuse holder apart. If the camera will focus. So, yeah, it's not focusing, sorry. So, to just take this apart, you hold both ends of it, push them towards each other a little bit. There's a spring in there, and twist them one way or another. There's little ears on here that engage in that. And it should come apart, and there should be a glass fuse. which the camera isn't focusing again. I believe that is a 20 amp fuse. I'll just look at it here. A little hard to read. Yes, that's a... I believe that's a 20 amp fuse. Anyway. Sorry, I'm saying anyway a lot. The terminal in this end of the fuse holder. You can maybe see that it's shiny. Yeah, the camera's not focusing again. Or still. So that's okay. That terminal is... not dirty. It's not shiny clean. And the fuse is not burnt. You can see the center of it there where it's thin. It's not broken. And the ends of it are shiny. So it looks okay to me anyway now there is a what connector the blue connector to join the fuse into the circuit because these uh, actually when these engines came from the factory i believe they did not have a fuse in this circuit and it was added at the factory and actually earlier model penguins may not have a fuse in this circuit it's a good idea to put a fuse in it but anyway we'll uh, there you go with anyway again so at this point I'll put the fuse back in and I'll try the battery on the sorry the cable on the battery again and see if anything has changed so after wiggling the fuse fuse holder around with the key on connecting the battery cable the negative battery cable to the or at least touching it to the negative post the generator light is not coming on so I'm gonna to have to dig a little further of course I should make sure that the battery ground this is the battery ground cable here which goes to the engine this is the battery the ground cable for the dynastart to make sure the control box is grounded and this is the ground for the lights so there all firmly connected that's nothing's loose there so what I'm going to do I'm going to next look at the control box that was just connected so because what we have in the control box of course you can see it way down in here you can't so once again I'm outside lights starting to fade okay there's a big red wire right there that takes that goes to the battery starts at the battery and it goes into the starter solenoid in the control box so I'm going to take the cover off of this control box and actually I'm going to disconnect the wires at the seat and pull this out into the engine compartment here where I can get a good look at it so I'm just going to disconnect the Disconnect the spark plug wire, and our battery is disconnected. So I'm going to I'm going to have to set the phone down to do this. So I'll turn the phone off. Okay, there. The I've pulled all the wires out of there. The red, the black, the gray, the black and brown. Well, I should be able to. Take the control box. There's, sometimes there's a screw holding it into the engine compartment here. Wiggle this around. Of course.
course, our positive battery cable is going to stop us now. So, actually, I'll disconnect that. Being very careful, of course, when you're working around the battery, not to touch both terminals at the same time with anything. Okay. Battery cable is disconnected, so our battery is totally disconnected now. This cable should come out of there. Okay. Should we check it in the box? If it wasn't, I think I actually put the box in here and then build the machine around it. <laughs> it's a uh, interesting fit. Put the fuel tank on this side because you don't want this fuel tank on the other side because that's where the muffler is. Okay, so I've got the actually I've got the box out here. Now here's our fuse. There's our positive wire with the butt connector, and then here we go to another butt connector, and that's an exposed. Um, live when the battery's connected wire. So I should fix that for sure. Put a new connector in there and I'm going to take the cover off here. I'll have to get a screwdriver to do that and see what we see inside. Now I've had a little fun getting this cover off of the control box here. As you can see there's a little bit of rust and someone has put a wrong screw in here. I'm sure it's not the right thread and they've just wound it in and it's corroded and when I went to take it out the screwdriver was slipping so anyway I had to cut the head off of the screw. So now I'm going to lift this cover off. It slid off pretty easy. And we'll see. Here is our positive battery cable. It looks okay. Sorry, looks okay. Comes through the grommet here. It is laying pretty close to this stud. It's actually against it, but I don't sorry, I don't think it's worn through. The screw here, I'll just check with the screwdriver that doesn't actually fit the slot very well. Well it's not moving with that screwdriver, and that screwdriver doesn't fit very well. And as we can see, here's the positive battery cable coming in. Here's the wire that goes out to the dash. So that, when the battery's connected, this wire, this wire here, which has the bare spot on it, is live all the time. So if that bare spot was touching the cover, we'd have uh, some fireworks. So I'm going to connect, sorry, going to fix this connection before I go any further, and I think Now I'll just, I'll cut, I'm going to cut both of these butt connectors out of here and use, I'm going to solder the wires together and put heat shrink on them, which would make a much better connection. So I'm going to do that and then I'll come back and root around some more here and see if I see any other reason why this, the power is not getting to the starter solenoid all the time and this this is the starter solenoid it's the starter solenoid generator cutout and voltage regulator this of course is the ignition coil this is the condenser that works with the ignition coil to create spark and this is the reversing solenoid so we know well before we turned the key the power was getting through this because our test light was coming on but and I said that just because the test light was coming on didn't mean that there was a good connection it just meant there was a a connection so we'll check make sure everything's tight in here the the grounds are all tight and uh, I'm gonna repair this wire and then we'll have to put this back in connect it all up see if I've made any difference in anything. 
I think I have everything assembled here to do the repair on this wire. And I'm going to see if I can show it all from start to end. If I can get camera set in the right spot here. Sorry. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut the wire on each side of this butt splice and on each side of this butt splice. And I'm also going to cut it off here and strip it back after I take this bullet connector off. This bullet connector, I'm not sure all the strands of wire are inside it. So I'm going to take that off first, cut, re-splice, cut and re-splice. So I have some, in no particular order, I have some heat shrink tubing here to protect the splices when they're done. I have a new piece of length of cable. This is four feet of number four gauge cable, which I believe may be slightly larger than the original cable, but larger is better than smaller when you're talking wire. I've got a butane soldering iron, some automatic wire strippers, some 6537 rosin core solder, and my heat gun. So we'll uh, dive in here and see what happens. Oh, one thing I haven't got is a cigarette lighter. So we have our cigarette lighter. That's what I was missing. We need that to light our butane torch. Our butane soldering iron, pardon me. Okay, so I'll light this. A little flame in there. Hold it open while it heats up a some kind of catalytic element up here. I'm not sure what it is that it's made of, but it heats up the tip, and then we're we see a little glow there. I'm gonna release it here and see. Yeah, it's starting to heat up there. We see the orange glow. And we'll just set the heat gun there for a minute. Now this, the tip on this soldering iron is very dirty. It would work better if it wasn't so dirty. This would also work better if this was held somehow. So that it... I'm going to just lay it on the soldering iron. Apply a little solder here to help. <laughs> and I'm probably no longer in view of the camera. Everything's moving around here. Anyway, put a little solder in here to help conduct the heat. And try holding the. There we go. So there's the bullet connector off of the end of the wire. And what I'm going to do. Heat it up here and see if I can get into this. Sorry, I'm gonna heat it up and try to melt. I need the old solder out of it here. There. Okay, I'm gonna set that somewhere where being hot it won't burn anything, melt anything. And where would that be? Well, Yeah, there's something behind me here that's nice and solid. I'm just going to put that on. Okay, and I'm going to shut the soldering iron off for now. Put it somewhere where it won't melt anything. Okay, so I want to cut this wire here. strand left there. Cut that one strand. Okay, so now we want to cut this butt connector out of here. As we can see, it's uh, not covering that end of that wire very well. 
So there's one butt connector removed. And we'll cut this other butt connector out of here. So we want to save the fuse and holder. Cut this other butt connector out of here. And we want to cut this bit of wire back to just beyond where that split is in the insulation. So hopefully we'll get some nice shiny copper wire. And we'll just dispose of these. So let's just show you this fuse holder. So wire goes in one end, fuse in the middle, wire at the other. So to open the fuse holder, we simply push it together slightly, rotate one half and pull it apart. There's our fuse. And in this half, there's simply the wire with a terminal on the end of it. And in this half is a wire with a terminal on the end of it and a spring. So I just put that back together. Everything looks clean in here, so that should be making good, should be making good contact. So to put it together, push together, turn it, and the spring holds it. So use my automatic wire strippers here and take some of the insulation off of this wire this is, these automatic wire strippers are great except you still have to choose the correct size of the wire now I'm going to bear some of this end. Now, this is for one end is to go into the bullet connector, which should have cooled by now. So, there's our bullet connector. So, we want that wire to go in a little further than that. So, I'll take a little more insulation. We ideally we'd like to have the wire just protruding or just barely protruding from that end of the connector at least that's the way I do it and this is the way I'm doing it not necessarily textbook right way twist those strands together just to make sure we get them in there because this bullet connector is no more than large enough for those okay so that I don't know if we can see in there probably not you just see the copper in there so that's about right I'm going to trust that that's going to stay on there while I'm working with this I'm going to strip a little more off of this end of this wire I just cut the insulation with the uh, cut the insulation with the strippers and pulled it off by hand so now the way I do this is I take the two wires and twist them together something like that and then I'm going to solder that and I'm going to solder that now before I go too much further and it would be good if I had a way to hold this while I was soldering it because I need one hand for the soldering iron, one hand for the solder, and one hand for the wire. I haven't got quite enough hands. So I'm going to cheat. I'm going to clamp this where I can see it and fire up the soldering iron again. Butane on. It's still a little warm to the touch. It'll take a second to heat up. But Now one thing to remember when you're using heat shrink on, on uh, wires that you're repairing, you have to either able to put the heat shrink on after the wire is repaired or you have to put it on before you solder the wires 
So this wire I'm going to be able to put the slide the heat shrink on after it's repaired at least this end of it. And there, sorry, I'm just going to start to glow. Good. So yeah, I'll be able to uh, solder this and then slide the heat shrink on to shrink it. But the other end I won't be able to, so I'll have to put the heat shrink on, slide it down the wire, solder the wire together, and then put the heat shrink in place. So solder is melting on the tip, so we'll just get put a little more solder on the soldering iron tip to help heat the wire and I try to start low in the joint I'm soldering because heat tends to flow up and this is taking a long time to heat up the solder should melt Touch the wire out here. There isn't the soldering iron is turned up as hot as it'll go. There we go. Starting to melt. There we go. The solder is starting to melt as I touch the wire out where I'm nowhere where I'm not right against the soldering iron so put enough solder in it so it looks like the the joint is full of solder I'm sure anybody watching this that's worked in the electronic industry is cringing and making all kinds of comments as to what I'm not doing correctly but shouldn't hold the heat on this longer than I have to because it will melt the insulation so now the trick with this one of the tricks when soldering is to not move the joint as it's cooling we got way too much solder on there it's dripping off so we don't want to disturb the joint even shake the machine so that the joint moves as it's cooling or we'll get what's called a cold joint a cold solder joint We'll let that cool. I'm not going to touch it to see if it's cool, but what I'm going to do is bend the wire up here. And while it's being held for me, I'm going to apply heat to the bullet connector. Let me get down there so I can see what I'm doing here. Sorry if my top of my head's in frame. I'm going to put some solder on the tip to help conduct the heat to the bullet and then I'm going to put the solder in the end of the bullet short straight there we go come out so another way to do this would have been to tin the wire which means I would have applied a thin layer of solder to the wire before I put it in the connector, in the bullet terminal, so I wouldn't have had to add as much solder. Now here I'm heating this low on the bullet, so hopefully the solder will flow from where I'm putting it down into the joint, and it doesn't seem to be flowing in any more, so I'm going to take the heat away. I'm going to turn the soldering iron off. I'm going to actually put heat shrink on this joint and do a strength test on that before I go any further. Okay, soldering iron down where it won't melt anything. 
and this will still be warm. Okay, so I want to connect, connect, I want to check this joint. I'm just pulling on it here to make sure it's held, and it is. Okay, so take that off of there. So now I'm going to take this heat shrink tubing. The heat shrink tubing, which can be trimmed. Actually, might be a little long for this, but more is better. I'm just going to check. I do have a little bit of a a sharp point there where the solder made a bit of a barb and there's some wires sticking out there. I'm just going to flatten them down a little bit with the pliers so the heat shrink tubing is very it's tough. This stuff is. It's I think it's double walled with a with a waterproof goop in it. So there's the heat shrink on but not shrunk. So the no next noise you hear is going to be the heat gun as I shrink this. Be careful not to burn our fingers with the heat gun. And the heat shrink is shrinking there. We'll move the heat gun along. So we don't overheat the heat shrink, and we don't want to heat overheat the fuse holder or the insulation on the wire. Rotating the wire here so we get all around the heat shrink. all of the heat shrink. I think I've got it all shrunk. There are no, whoops, put it in the camera here. It's shrunk quite tight around the solder joint. You can almost see the solder joint through, and this will be warm to the touch because we just had it heated up. Actually, I don't think it's shrunk there. I'll just leave a little more right there. Okay, that I think is done. See the ooze out here is the waterproofing compound, whatever it is that they've got in the heat shrink. So there's the new bullet connector. The larger red wire spliced into the actual smaller wire for the fuse holder. Now I'm going to strip the other end of this. Strip the end of this wire. Good. There's some nice shiny copper there to solder. Just twist those wires. Wire strands. Now I'm going to take this cover off of here. And I want a little more length here so I can put the heat shrink on. If you put the heat shrink on, Sorry, if you put the heat shrink on and it's too close to the joint you're soldering, you'll shrink the heat shrink as you're soldering and then you won't be able to move it. 
So, I'm going to get my screwdriver and undo the other end of this wire so I can pull it out. So I can go ahead and strip it. So there it is stripped and the strands twisted. Get rid of these bits of insulation. Get my screwdriver and we'll come back, put the heat shrink on the solder. Okay. This red wire is connected to the same terminal as the battery is connected to on this starter relay generator cutout voltage regulator. I'm going to take that screw out, and there's a lock washer and flat washer here. Put it carefully aside. Pull that wire. So there's the battery cable. Then there is a little, I'm not sure what we want to call it, a furl maybe, to hold that in place. So we'll set those out of play, out of place, out of the way, where they can't fall into the darkness below here. So I'm just going to pull that wire away from the relay. Pull it out of the grommet because what we want to do is take a piece of heat shrink tubing and slide it well enough down the wire here that it's away from the heat of the soldering iron because it will melt and then you won't be able to move it onto the joint because it's melted and then you'll have to take a knife and cut away the melted part so you can move the melted part and the non-melted part onto the joint. Does it sound like maybe I have experience with that? Okay, so twist our wires together here. And then... And put this where I can hold it. So it will stay where I want it. Solder and soldering iron. Butane on. Contact. Blue flame again. I mentioned before, oh, yeah, this is a Soldering iron I've had for a while, and it's getting a little bit, um, it's getting a personality. I wouldn't recommend anybody else keep one that doesn't act correctly, but you could do this with an electric soldering gun or soldering iron. I find by the time I run the extension cord to run the soldering iron, the soldering iron won't get hot enough to do what it is I want to do, and it takes forever. So the butane's kind of handy when it stays lit. Make sure that's all the way up. It is. It is now. Moved a little bit. Yes, it wasn't up quite full. So what I'm trying to do here is wait until I see a little bit of a glow in this hole here before I release the sleeve down over the flame. Try it. Okay, we're heating again. Okay, we'll get solder ready. Okay, so we're down here close to the body of the penguin. I see a loose strand of wire that's going to end up poking out through the heat shrink. So, again. My apologies to those who work in the electronics industry who know the correct way to solder. This is actually an improvement over the way I used to solder, believe it or not.
Okay, solder's starting to melt there. And we want it on the top of the wire. So what we did to move to pull this, the reason sorry, we pulled the wire out of that grommet, of course, was so the heat the soldering iron because, of course, it doesn't the wire doesn't just get hot at this joint. We have to hold the soldering iron on here for a moment or two, and everything the heat soaks into the wire. I'm sure that's not the correct term, soaks into the wire. But as the wire gets warm, it goes up the wire and it'll heat up quite a way. And the heat shrink will, of course, shrink. And it's not where we want it to shrink. And I'm going to solder, attempt to get solder on all the exposed copper here where the joint is. Okay, I've got so much solder on there that there's a blob just fell off of it there. Okay. I think that's enough solder. This solder is cooled. It shouldn't have melted into the penguin. No, it didn't. You have to be careful that doesn't drip into your sock. Because it will, of course, solidify as it hits your sock. And then you can't get it away from your ankle. Ask me again how I know that. Okay, soldering iron and solder are out of the way, not touching that while it uh, cools and hardens, so we can avoid a cold solder joint. I'm going to need a heat gun after the pliers, give it a little squeeze to take the sharpness off of any little solder icicle I've made. So this joint is pretty much full of solder. I'm not sure how much we lost due to our little technical difficulty, but anyway. <laughs> got enough solder in this joint to suit me so I'm going to pull the heat sleeve heat shrink sleeve up on that and then I'm going to investigate why the wire has come out of our fusible fuse holder fusible fuse holder well, I think the reason it's come out is because it's an inexpensive fuse holder and the crimped on terminal, the wire is broken out of the crimped on terminal. So that was all an exercise in uh, using up some heat shrink and solder. I'm going to replace this fuse holder with a new one. So I'll move that heat shrink back out of the way. I'm going to cut that there. I'm going to carefully Well, for some reason, I bought a new fuse holder. So, I'm going to just go ahead and splice this in the same way I was doing the old one when it fell apart and then I'll come back and actually I'll put this in place I'll solder this in if I can figure out how to get into this child's food package there we go so there's the fuse holder it's got orange wire instead of black but it's uh, the wire may actually be a little closer to what we're connecting it to they've already cut the wires to partially strip them. So I'm going to just 
solder this in, put the heat shrink on like I was doing with the other one, and then we'll come back and see where I'm at.